back to Olfactive Files. I'm Tara and today we have a, a pretty massive haul that is a collective haul over the last few months um, as well as a giveaway because we just recently hit 7,000 subscribers. So yay, thank you very much. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a giveaway for every thousand up till we get to 10,000 and they're going to get a little bit bigger as we go. So uh, today is going to be the smallest of the giveaways, then 8,000 will be a bit bigger, 9,000 a bit bigger, and 10,000 will be the biggest of the giveaways. So anyway, today's giveaway, um, I'll tell you the details at the end, but just so you know what it is. Uh, the second place winner will receive a uh, sort of travel spray size of Moschino Toy Boy as well as Angel and both of these I think are unisex even though this one's marketed towards men and this one towards women and then the first place winner will receive this uh, gift set here this uh, discovery set this is the one that Navitu sent to me um, but I like Arcanum from this the most and I already have a full-size bottle that they also sent me so I'm going to give this away to one of my subscribers uh, it includes 15 mils each of Arcanum, Lautus, and Apu Lentis. So if you did not win the uh, brand new travel set that Navitus was giving away in my last video, now you're going to have a chance to win another one that I'm giving away because uh, I don't need this. And like I said, a lot of the PR stuff that I get, um, I don't necessarily want to keep and I'd rather give it away to you guys. By the way, the giveaways unfortunately do need to be US only just because of like restrictions with sending perfume because it's a hazardous material. <laughs> um, so just FYI for that, but I'll give you the rest of the details at the end. Now though, let's get into this haul and let me tell you about all the new fragrances that I've purchased since I did my collection videos. Okay, so I think I have 20 fragrances here, and just like I did in my collection videos, I'm going to go in alphabetical order today. So we're going to begin with one from Aqua de Parma. And this one is called Mandol Mandorlo, I think, Mandorlo di Sicilia. And this one is just a really great almond fragrance. Unfortunately, I don't know the perfumer, but this is like, it has um, almond, I think there's some anise in here. Definitely a little bit of citrus, as you might expect from an Aqua de Parma fragrance. Um, I would say it's maybe a touch fruity, a little bit like a, I don't know exactly what, maybe some sort of floral in there. Like I would guess a, it's either a white floral or maybe a yellow floral in here. And then there's, I think, a little bit of uh, vanilla and musk in here, maybe something a little bit woody as well. I've worn this a few times now. I actually picked this up at Costco of all places on their website for a really good price. Um, but yeah, this one is just a really great almondy sort of fragrance, not too heavy. Um, probably would be good like three seasons, just not in the winter. I don't think it's heavy enough for that, at least here where it gets really cold. But otherwise, I really like it. Speaking of hauls, I just got this uh, like quilted poofy sweatshirt from Target. And I cannot decide if it is cute or absolutely hideous, but I can tell you it's incredibly comfortable. So <laughs> I'm gonna wear it either way. Anyway, uh, next up we have one from, is it Bodicea? Is that how you say it? Bodicea the Victorious. So here's the front of the bottle, but the back has like the name of the house and the fragrance, and this one is called Ardent. And I mentioned in a video recently that this one smells a bit similar to Noir de Noir from Tom Ford. Let me actually, I have some tester strips here. Let me spray these. So this one, it smells a lot like that, but without that truffle note that is in Noir Ne Duar. Uh, this one was created by Christian Pro Provenzano. And yeah, I definitely get a lot of rose. I think there's some saffron in here, but uh, I would say it's mostly like the rose, patchouli, maybe a bit of amber kind of uh, accord there and some vanilla, I think are kind of the main notes that I get from this. I, I would say if you do like Noir de Noir, but you don't love that truffle note that's in both Noir de Noir and um, Black Orchid, if that is kind of off-putting to you from Noir de Noir, check out Ardent because it, like I said, is very similar, but kind of removes that aspect of it, maybe a little bit less earthy. Um, and like I said, more of the kind of like ambery vanilla with the rose and patchouli. Um, yeah, this is just really beautiful and I love it. So that one is called Ardent. Next is one that uh, doesn't last very long, I'll tell you that, but it's been on my wish list for a while because I just really like the way it smells. And that is Byredo's Mojave Ghost. So this is only the second one I've ever purchased from Byredo, partially because the performance of these isn't great. Um, also, there's just not a lot that I really like from them. Of course, I have Bald Freak and I really like that one, but I also really like Mojave Ghost. So again, I'm not sure who the perfumer on this one is, but 
To me, this is sort of like a floral ambrette woody combo. Um, I'm not exactly sure what florals are in here off the top of my head, but it just smells sort of like a woody floral combo. It's light, it's refreshing. You definitely sort of get that musky ambrette quality to it. Um, yeah, and it's just uh, an easy wear, to be quite honest. It has kind of a unique feel to it, but it's nothing like super crazy or super weird. Um, I just really enjoy wearing it kind of when it's, I don't know, when it's just like I don't know what to wear. Uh, this is a good one. And I went through a decant of this and finally decided to pick it up. Uh, I got this one from Selfridges and it was cheaper to buy it from there than it is in the US. Next up is the newest addition uh, to my collection from the Carolina Herrera Confidentials line. This one is called Iris Empire, and of course I had to get this. This popped up on, I think it was FragranceNet, for a really good price, and so I just blind bought it, and I'm glad I did. I really like this line as a whole. There are a couple that I've purchased and or sampled that I didn't love, but for the most part, I really enjoy the fragrances from this collection. Unfortunately, for most of them, there's no perfumer listed, but they all have this sort of like deep, rich darkness to them, for the most part, nearly all of them anyway, uh, that I really, really enjoy. And this one is no exception. This is, I really like this one. So this one, of course there is the iris, but it's like there's, I think it's cinnamon, there's some sort of spice in there. It's got like this like chocolatey, leathery quality to it. Oh, it's really good. There might be patchouli in here as well, or maybe even a touch of something like incense-like, but I mostly get like a chocolatey, patchouli, iris thing with some, some spices. Like I said, like it smells like cinnamon and some leather. God, it's really nice and definitely unisex. So if that sounds good to you, um, like if you like, for example, uh, Dior Homme Intense, but maybe something a little bit more gourmand than that, this one would be really nice. So that's Iris Empire, has a hair on it. Let me get that off. <laughs> um, and it's from Carolina Herrera. All right, here's another easy wearing one. This is from Chanel and it is uh, Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, And this is the Eau de Parfum concentration. I use my Ulta points to get this one, uh, which was really nice. Uh, I like using my Ulta points to get fragrances, especially ones that don't really get discounted much. Um, so this one, again, very easy wear fragrance. This was created by Olivier Polch, who does, you know, most of their fragrances, but um, it's really pretty. I will say that. I wasn't sure that I would like this. Um, I don't know. It just seems like it may be a little bit too pretty for me, but I do think that it's just a great like wear to work kind of fragrance. So this one has, I think it's uh, quince that's in here and maybe some sort of like a citrus note with that, but it's like fruity and then there are florals in here. Definitely rose. I get like a, a lot of rosiness from this one. Maybe there's supposed to be jasmine in this too, but I don't really pick it up. And then in the dry down, it's definitely like this very clean musk sort of feel to it. So uh, fruity floral musk kind of fragrance. Like I said, very easy to wear. I don't think anybody would be really offended by this. And um, if you like rose, then this one might be a good one to check out if you're interested in this line, because I think this is supposed to be the most rosy of the ones from the uh, Chance collection. The other Chanel I have here is called Paris Venice. And this one is absolutely beautiful. This is going to be more of like a spring and summer fragrance. This line is all like eau de toilette. That's why they come in the bigger like 125 ml bottles. So they don't last like a super long time, but uh, I, I just think this is a gorgeous fragrance. Again, this one is Olivier Polge and this is like a beautiful citrus iris combo. It definitely has a little bit of like the orris, like waxy buttery kind of feel to it has like a clean white musk, maybe some vanilla in here, maybe some other florals, but mostly it's like a citrusy iris uh, musky kind of combo. It's just really pretty and easy to wear. And once it starts to warm back up again, which I know I got this probably in not, not an ideal time since it's now cooling off, but in the spring and summer next year, I'm sure I'll wear this a lot. Um, and like I said, even though it doesn't last a long time, the bottles are a bit bigger and it's not like insanely expensive, this line. So I wouldn't mind like reapplying if I had to. All right, next let's get into these Chloe fragrances that I picked up. These bottles are some of my favorites in my collection now. They're absolutely gorgeous. So this is from the Atelier de Fleur uh, collection. And this first one up is called Cedrus. So this is supposed to be a cedar or like woody kind of fragrance. Now I think all three of these that I picked up, yeah, all three of these I picked up were created by Quentin Biche. Um, in fact, 
as we go through here, this next set of fragrances, you're gonna hear a lot of his name and Antoine Lee. <laughs> um, for some reason, I just picked up a lot of their fragrances lately. So anyway, this is so beautiful. I can smell it already. So this one, it's like, I, I think there's like an, a mossiness to it, but it's mostly woody with a bit of like a vetiver, sort of hay-like touch to it. Like I said, I think there's a little bit of moss in there. There's something that makes it like not super heavy though. It's like fresh. Maybe there's like a spice or something in here, but God, it's just beautiful. It's like a fresh woody fragrance and it's easy to wear. Um, this one, or I actually should say, like all of these are sort of styled like a, a solo floor, like kind of around a singular note. Obviously this is not a, a floral one since it's called Cedrus, but um, they're kind of styled like that in a way that you can mix and match if you want to layer them, but you definitely don't need to. I feel like even though they're sort of composed that way, they're they're enough on their own to be just like a really beautiful, not overly complex fragrance. All right, the next one that I got was Lavanda, again, Quentin Beach here. And this one is a lavender fragrance. There are like little stories on the boxes, which are really cute that tell like the perfumer's inspiration. Now he's not the only perfumer for this line. It just happens to be that I liked his fragrances from this line the most so far anyway. I haven't tried them all, I've tried maybe like two thirds of the ones from this line. Um, so, so ooh, let's not drop the bottles. <laughs> so this one, it, it's supposed to just be lavender here. And it could very well be that, but it does feel like there might be a slight woodiness to it. And also maybe a tiny touch of like something citrusy. Mostly it's lavender though, and it's it's really pretty. It's light, it's not, um, I don't know, it's not overbearing. It just feels really like calming and refreshing. Not like a nighttime kind of lavender to me, more of like a, like, meditative like daytime sort of scent. So that one is Lavanda. And then the last one of the three that I got is called Vanilla Planifolia, which uh, you know that new Shalimar has the name Vanilla Planifolia in it. But this one is supposed to be centered around the vanilla orchid, like the actual vanilla flower, not so much the vanilla pods. So yeah, this one, it does have a vanilla feel to it, but it is still floral and it's also a bit woody. I would say that it's kind of like more of the, the floral aspect than it is like your traditional vanilla, but it does smell like there's some vanilla in there and of course a base of woods. It's not my favorite of the three. I think Cedrus is my favorite and then Lavanda and then this one, but I still really like it enough to get a bottle. And I think this one could work really nicely with the Lavanda to make like a the lavender vanilla combo. Again, I'm not usually into layering, but these I have so much of that I wouldn't care to use two at once. Um, so yeah, I just, those are gorgeous. Those are the Chloe fragrances. The next one has been a little bit hard to find in the US. This is Dior Homme Parfum. Uh, it did pop up at Fragrance Buy, which is when I got it, I think. Is that when I got it? Yes. <laughs> um, and this one was created by Francois Damashi, who is no longer the in-house perfumer for Dior. Just recently he was replaced by Francis Kirkjean, uh, but uh, he created this one here and it is gorgeous. So this one of course has that uh, beautiful iris that is in Dior Homme Intense as well. But to me, this one, it's very similar to that, but more leathery. So it's like a little bit more leather dominant in this one. I would say there's something a little bit woody. I think the ambrette is still in here that's in the Dior Homme Intense. Maybe some florals other than iris, but mostly it's like iris and leather to me and Embret. Uh, so that one's absolutely gorgeous. And I, I'm not sure which one I like more, this one or the Intense. I think they're both great. I have both. I'm not sure that anybody needs both, um, but I don't think you can go wrong with either. So that one is Dior Homme Parfum. Next up is one from Diptyque. This is called Fleur de Peau, and this is the Eau de Parfum. This was created by Olivier Pachou. And um, this one, when I smelled it in Diptyque, uh, in Chicago, right away, I thought this one had some ambra in it as well. Um, I think the woman said that that might not necessarily be listed, but she also thought that uh, it was in there. Her name was Sarah, by the way, I called her the woman. <laughs> Sarah said the same thing, she works there. Um, yeah, to me, it's like floral. I think there's like a green Angelica sort of thing in here. Pink pepper for sure. Maybe something like some light aldehydes, nothing like overpowering. A little rosy. A little bit of ambergris, I think, is in here, they said. Uh, woody, and then, like I said, the ambrette really kind of like 
like I don't think she I think she said that it wasn't listed or that wasn't part of this but it does smell like it to me so maybe it's just musk or something but yeah anyway I really really like this one it's a lighter wearing sort of a skin type of scent but really pretty so that one is Fleur de Peau next we have one that is now discontinued it's from Guerlain it is Mom Precious Nectar and this one was hyped for a little bit um, or for maybe quite a bit and I never smelled it but um, I found a good deal on it so I decided to try it out let me just dip this in here real quick so this one Mm, it's really pretty. I can see why it was hyped up. So this was created by Terry Vosser and it's like To me, I get like a sort of almondy orange blossom Like floral kind of thing. There's definitely vanilla in here definitely some woods and Maybe a little bit of musk, but it's a really nice sort of almondy orange blossom combo And I think the reason why I didn't really try it before was because I don't always love orange blossom But it's not overbearing here it's like really nicely like blended in proportion with the other things. And I do really like almond and I like, you know, vanilla, musk, woods, things like that. So that one is Mom Precious Nectar. Uh, I, I believe it is discontinued now, at least in the United States, I believe. Uh, so I'm not sure that you can find that, but if you do come across it and you can try it out, give it a smell. The other Guerlain I got was uh, this one here. This is Neroli uh, Outre Noir, I think is how you say that. And this one has been moved to the new bottles as all of the uh, art materials collection has been now. This one is really gorgeous. I got a sample of this one. I bought something else from Guerlain. I can't remember what it was. But this was, uh, this is created by Delphine Jelk and Terry Vosser. So this is actually a tea fragrance, which I'm glad. When I got the sample, I was like, I'm not gonna like this because I don't like Neroli. But I don't really pick up a whole lot of Neroli in here. I definitely pick up citrus kind of notes. Um, May, I, I assume that, I mean, obviously there's Neroli in here. I don't pick up a ton of that. I pick up like citruses, tea, I guess Neroli. <laughs> obviously there's Neroli in here, but not like, it's not bitter. It's almost more like how orange blossom typically presents than Neroli. This does have like a little bit of a smokiness to it. And then it has sort of that uh, vanilla quality that a lot from this line have. It's not a vanilla fragrance. It's definitely more of a tea fragrance, but that vanilla that you get in a lot of these art materials collection fragrances is still there. This might actually be like my favorite tea fragrance right now. Um, there are a few others that I really like, but in general, I'm not a huge fan of tea fragrances, but this one right away, it just stood out to me. And in fact, when I wore this once to get my hair done, when I had the sample, uh, my hairdresser told me that it smelled great and I smelled very expensive. <laughs> um, so uh, definitely worth it, or at least worth a try, of course. You should try it, make sure you like it. But for me, it's definitely worth the purchase. Um, and I did get that one discounted, which was great. All right, next up is one from Antoine Lee. This comes from the house of Lay and Demadabla, and it is Rose de Jamal. And this fragrance has been on my wish list for close to a year now, basically since I did that video with the Discovery set. Um, I've been purchasing these slowly in order of how much I like them. So I got the Vanilla Van first, and then I picked up the uh, Mousse de Sable, and now this one, because it's my third favorite from the line, but I absolutely still love it. Like, this line is amazing. So this, to me, is a very green, rosy fragrance. It smells like the rose stems with the rose petals. Um, I think there's a bit of mint in here. There's definitely a woodiness to it touch of pink pepper for sure you can pick that up but overall it's just one of the most like beautiful natural rose scents that actually smells like the whole rose plant like the whole rose bush right absolutely gorgeous um and i know that the quality of the ingredients in here is fantastic i can't remember exactly how many like roses go into one bottle, but it was like some insane amount. <laughs> um, so definitely uh, to me, a very high quality fragrance and this line in general, if you haven't tried it, I think their discovery set is fantastic and worth a try. Next up is one that I recently tried thanks to one of my subscribers slash friends. Um, this comes from Molten Brown and it's called Milk Musk Eau de Parfum. There is a Eau de Toilette version of it, but this one is the EDP. Um, and this is just absolutely fantastic. I don't hear a lot of people talking about Molten Brown fragrances. Um, oh, this is beautiful. I like wearing this one to bed, but I think it's great for any time really. I'm not sure who the perfumer is for this one, but I think the name really describes it well. It's like a milky musk kind of fragrance. 
but it's milky in the like sort of comforting quality and it doesn't go like really lactonic on me how some sort of milk notes do where it kind of almost goes sour on my skin this one doesn't do that so milk musk besides the obviously musk and like milkiness to it it definitely has like some vanilla i would say there's tonka in here it kind of smells like to me maybe something a little bit resinous yeah but it's it's really gorgeous um I I can't tell you how surprised I was with this fragrance. Um, not that I necessarily thought anything bad of Molten Brown because I really like their shower gels, but that's all I really tried. So I didn't see them as much of a fragrance house as more of like a bath and body kind of product house or company, but Milk Musk is gorgeous. So if you haven't sampled that, try to get yourself a sample. Um, again, this is the EDP. I don't know how the EDT compares because I haven't smelled it. Sorry about the dog, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that one is really nice. Next up, we have another Antoine Lee fragrance. This one is called Pure Distance White, which I think is number six, is that right? I don't think it says on there. I believe it's number six from the collection. Um, so these fragrances, I will tell you, the actual presentation, not exactly like fantastic considering how expensive these are, but the fragrances do all smell incredibly good, like really great quality. Um, so Antoine Lee's done a few for this house and I also really like Black, which is number five, I think that he did. And I think the other one he did, or one of the other ones he did is Gold, which I can't remember what number that is. And I like that one as well. Um, but anyway, so this one is like, it's a rose sort of fragrance to me. Uh, like that seems to be the most dominant note. I definitely pick up some citrus and musk uh, right away as well. I do think that there's some Oris or Iris in here. And then something woody and maybe maybe even like a little bit of patchouli in this one. It is pretty like close to the skin-ish. Like it projects some, but not like a ton. It's not a beast mode fragrance, but it's really beautiful and it does hang around. Like it does last even though it stays pretty quiet most of the time. Um, these are insanely pricey, like maybe a little too much, although the quality, like I said, is fantastic. And they are um, really high concentrations, like the highest concentrations I think I've ever seen. This one is 38% perfume oil. So of this bottle, like literally over a third of it, like that much is actually straight up oil, <laughs> like perfume oil. So like I said, incredibly high quality, very high concentration fragrances. Um, and so in that regard, yes, the price is somewhat justified, but maybe it's a little bit too much. Now I got this one 30% off because I picked it up at Niche Essence when they had their sale recently. Um, so that was good, definitely helped some, but still a house that you should most certainly sample. Do not blind buy because they're just too expensive for that. Next up is one from Stéphane Humbert Lucas, who is, I believe, the perfumer and owner of the house. My bottle, the little stone is not on correctly, by the way, it's just how it came. But this is called Panthea Iris. And I do believe that this whole line might be discontinued, like this house is not going to exist anymore, I think. I picked this up from Fragrance Buy recently uh, because I've heard a lot about it and it was a really good price. And I'm glad I picked it up. Is it my favorite Iris? No, it's not but it's a really good iris fragrance. I think the reason why it's not my favorite iris fragrance is partially because I detect a lot of violet, not as much as the iris, but a lot of violet in here. And although those are paired frequently, I'm not a huge violet fan. And so I think that's why this is maybe not my favorite. It does have a little bit of a sweetness to it. I would say there's probably tonka in this is kind of what it smells like. Definitely woody. It smells like there's probably bergamot, some sort of citrus in there as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's like mostly like a, a woody iris fragrance with, uh, with a little bit of, or I should say quite a bit of violet that's detectable as well. And some tonka or something that smells sort of like tonka that maybe sweetens it up a bit. So anyway, um, that one is Panthea Iris. If you don't get your hands on it, you know, like I said, it's good, but it's not my favorite iris. So it's probably okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, that's that one. Next, we have one that I sampled thanks to Sabrina at the Saks Fifth Avenue here in Indianapolis. And um, when I purchased my most recent Killian, she put a sample of this along with like a whole bunch of other samples in my bag. This is Fougere d'Argent. And I actually ended up getting this at Cosmetics Company Store because I saw it there when I went and I remembered I really liked the sample. Uh, so I had to go for it. It was 50% uh, off, which is always great. So this one, I hadn't even thought about trying because it says Fougere, right? And I thought, oh, this is gonna be a really masculine fragrance. It's not, definitely unisex. It 
certainly is aromatic like a fougere is, but there's something in here that sort of like sweetens it up a bit and makes it uh, pretty unique, honestly. So this one was created by Olivia Gillotin and Linda Song. And like I said, it's definitely aromatic. There's definitely lavender in here, things that you would typically see in a fougere. It's woody. Um, there might be some ginger in this, I think, but there's, like I said, there's something in it that almost gives it like a little bit of, I don't know, like, like a spicy sort of quality. Yeah, I don't, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's Tonka that's in here, um, but it's really beautiful. So that one is Fougère de Argent. If you haven't checked it out because like me, you saw Fougère and thought maybe this isn't for me, I encourage you to check it out next time you are out and can sample it and check your cosmetics company store to see if they have it there for 50% off. Not sponsored. <laughs> All right, the last two are both from Yves Saint Laurent and the first one up I was influenced to buy uh, from two people, Shuri from uh, The Top Note and also Lizzie from Rose and Jones. So this one is called Blouse and this is a rose sort of fragrance. Uh, who created this? Oh, Quentin Beach did this one too. Yeah, I knew there's a lot of Quentin Beach in here and a lot of Antoine Lee. So Quentin Beach did this one and I don't think that will surprise you because it does remind me a little bit of Delina. So this one to me has like, a uh, sort of green watery rose with some pink pepper. It's like a little bit musky, a little bit woody, and maybe a touch of citrus. I would say it maybe doesn't really have the lychee that like Delina or those, you know, Delina line of fragrances have, um, but it is sort of reminiscent of that. This is really pretty. I think it will be perfect for spring, um, especially. And I'm really glad that I picked it up. I did get it on sale. Um, it was part of the Neiman Marcus sale where you basically, you had to spend a certain amount, but you basically got 25% off. So I picked it up there. Um, just be on the lookout for that. They do those sales off and on, especially around the holidays. So if you're curious about anything from Yves Saint Laurent, you might be able to get it for 25% off from there, including this one, blouse. Um, but uh, I also, it was back ordered, so I'm still getting it, but I also, during the same sale, got Tuxedo, which I've really wanted. Um, I have sampled that and I really like it. But currently the other one that I have is Trench, which is the iris fragrance from this line. It's created by Amandine Clerc Marie. And this one, oh, that was hard to get off. <laughs> um, this one is like uh, kind of in the same vein as like a Prada infusion to iris, which I know I have, too many fragrances that are in that same sort of style, but I love them. So I think the difference between this and some of those other ones is that this one maybe has, like it's very citrusy in the opening. I think there's also fig in this one, which is not present in any of the other uh, sort of iris fragrances that are similar to this. Obviously just a crap ton of beautiful floral iris, some musk, some light wood, maybe like, it's nothing heavy, maybe like cedar and Actually, I'm not sure if it's musk or maybe ambrette in this one as well, but something that smells a little bit musky like that, um, like a clean one. So anyway, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Um, do I need it? Absolutely not. No, I don't need any more fragrances that smell like this. And in fact, I think I'm done. I, I think I'm not going to buy any more of these like sort of clean, fresh, iris, woody fragrances, but I'm really glad I got this one. This one I think I got on Fragrance Buy or Fragrance Net. I think I got on Fragrance Net for a really good deal, like maybe half off. Um, so I'm okay with that, but yeah, I need to stop with these style of iris fragrances. <laughs> All right, so those are the fragrances that I've added since I started my fragrance collection series, um, which is already over. You can go back and watch if you want, but I started that in uh, July. So basically like three-ish months or so uh, that I've collected these. Um, but now let me quickly tell you about the rules for the giveaway. So again, there'll be two winners. The first place will get this Navitus Parfums Discovery set. And um, second place will get these two travel size or like, you know, travel spray fragrances, the Moschino Toy Boy and the Angel. These are both 10 mils by the way. And so to enter first, of course, you do need to be in the US or have a US mailing address just because of shipping restrictions. Second thing you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to my channel. And also if you could head over to my Instagram, I'm also at 
Olfacta Files on there um, and follow me on Instagram. And then after you do those two things, just leave me a comment down below and let me know uh, that you want to enter the giveaway and which fragrance that I talked about today you are most interested in or that you like the most. Maybe you have smelled these. So tell me your favorite or the one that you thought sounded the best, okay? So that's it. So subscribe, go to Instagram if you have it. If you don't, it's okay. But if you have it, I'd love if you could follow me on there. And then leave me a comment. Let me know that you want to enter the giveaway and which fragrance you like the most from today's video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell. Thank you all again so much for 7,000 subscribers. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate y'all and I'll see you next time. Bye.